God bless you. God bless you this morning. I give God glory for us to be here today. I celebrate the grace of God upon your life. I'm happy to come and meet you online this wonderful Sunday. I am pleased to see you. So let us just pray as we are listening to this wonderful worship. And so, Father God, we bless your name, we honor your name. As we are about to enter into our spirit, oh God, to understand your word, Father God, let your floor gates open, let your heavens open, and let it rain, oh God, that your words will sing into our spirit, and we will hear you and do your will in Jesus' name. Desire and I long to worship. bless the name of the Lord this Sunday. Hallelujah. We honor the name of the most high God that is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He alone is our strength, our shield. What a blessed Sunday it is. What is a wonderful day. What a wonderful day it is that I came and I met you. What a beautiful day it is that I came and I saw the children of God walking in glory, walking in power, speaking and moving marvelously in the Lord, dancing marvelously in the Lord, celebrating him in their hearts and in the physical. 
I, 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 I celebrate you. I celebrate the grace of God upon your life. For the passion you have for Christ, I celebrate you. For the love that you have for our Lord, our Savior, I celebrate you. You are celebrated, a wonderful man that you are. You are celebrated, a wonderful woman that you are. You are celebrated. May God bless you. Let us just raise up our voice and pray real quick. And so Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Adonai, King of Kings, Ocean Divider, Waymaker in the wilderness, the pillar of fire that protects his children. Oh my God, the God that answered by fire. I bless your name, Jesus, for you are God. Take your glory right now as we are about to worship you. Take your glory right now as we are about to celebrate you in Jesus' name. We worship you, God. You alone are worthy to be praised. Again, you are all welcome to our online ministry. You are all welcome to the All Nations Prayer Move Mountains online ministry. I am woman of God, Marilyn Doka, based here in the U.S. May God bless you. Real quick, uh, I want you to turn with me. Uh, if you got your Bible, turn to the book of uh, turn to the book of First Peter, and we are going to be looking at chapter two. And um, this one, I have this Bible here, and I'm going to be diving into the words with you. Okay, diving into the word with you. Sorry, I want to use my phone because I like the translation of the New Living Translation. I like it, so I want to use it. I want you to turn to First Peter, um, twenty, chapter two, verse twenty, twenty-one. And you, when you hear me stop, that means we have stopped. Hallelujah. For God calls you to do good, even it means, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example. Hallelujah. And you must follow him in his steps. He is your example, and you must follow him in his steps. Hallelujah. He never sinned, nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judged fairly. Hallelujah. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. Hallelujah. So I just want to read a certain portion again that interests me. And our message is coming from this particular portion today. According to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, um, it said he did not retaliate when he was insulted nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judge what fairly. Believers around the world today, around the globe today, celebrating the grace of God upon your life, I'd like to present you the theme of our message today. The theme today that we have is what? Forgiving without apology. Now, I know some of you hear that and say, wow, what does she mean by that? Forgiving without apologies. That is our message today. Forgiving without apology. That is our message today. So permit me, believers around the globe, I'm going to put this Bible down. And as you know, I love to teach, and I, I love when I teach that people will also learn. It is it's very essential. I just want us to take it a little easy today, not so, not so, um, not so much. We're not in the speed because I really want you guys to um, understand the significance of this message that God gave me to give to somebody out there. Okay. So let me just reiterate the scripture again, the part that I took out, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse um, 23. It said, he did not retaliate when he was insulted. Okay? 
nor threatened revenge when he suffered. Hallelujah. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judge what fairly. Hallelujah. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judge fairly. His father who always judge fairly. Hallelujah. And before I even get into our message, I want to add this other scripture, Luke chapter 3, verse 34. It indicates Jesus said this, Father forgave them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gamble for his clothes by throwing dice. Believe us around the world, the words of the Lord. Permit me again to remind you of our message today. Forgiving without apologies. Forgiving without apologies. Now, I know some of you are listening to me and you are like, what really is she driving at? What really is the woman of God talking about? And what really is, is, is she trying to point at? What is the significance of this message that she's throwing out there? Forgiving without apologies. And, and I know because um, we as humans, when a friend say forgive someone without apologies, it's like, wow, what does she mean by that? Or wow, how can I do that? You know, today I gave you this thing, forgiving without apologies, because God said you, you must hear it. It is for you. I start by saying today, that God commands us to forgive. Hallelujah. God himself in heaven command us to forgive. As human, it's most often difficult for us to forgive. As humans, um, we, 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 we turn to kind of hold on to things because why? we are not perfect. We are humans. So as humans, we... we we tend, to, we tend to find it difficult to forgive our neighbors or to forgive somebody who have deeply wronged us because for our nature as human being, the, the sentiments is, very, um, is very, very difficult for us to let go when we are hurt. I'm a witness. So today, what happens? Most humans, once, once they come to forgiveness, most humans, when you hear forgive someone with our apologies, they are, there are questions that come into our minds. Questions like, what if the person keeps, you know, hurting me the more? What if the person keeps, you know, doing the same thing to me the more? And what if the person never realized that they need to apologize? Or what if the person never realized that they have ever wronged me? As a believer, these are the thoughts in your mind. As a child of God, these are the thoughts that run wild in your mind. How, how, you know, what if this person never apologized to me? And they continue to do the same thing and same thing and same thing over and over again. As children of God, you know, these are things that come to our minds. Permit me to say somebody in your house. There is nobody in that house that can put their hands up right now and say, I have never thought like this before. I know one or two persons that is watching me right now. You have thought about these things. You have said, what if... Somebody continue to hurt me. What if somebody never apologized for the wrong they do to me? And the woman of God is saying, I should practice forgiveness without apologies. How possible is that? I know you have thought about that. As a child, as a, a, a grown man that you are, as a grown woman that you are, as a young girl that you are, a teenager, these things go through our minds. Because why? For one thing, because we are humans. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. So let me just take my time. Like I said, I jotted down these messages for you guys. So let us just 
take our time and enjoy ourselves and our Holy Ghost party. But looking at 1 Peter 2, verse 3, today, 23, Jesus was humiliated. Jesus was, he was not appreciated. He was maltreated. He never revenged. He never fought back. Jesus was the one who healed. Jesus was the one who opened the eyes of the blind. Jesus was the one who turned water to wine. Jesus was the one who made the barren to be fruitful. Jesus was the one who, who gave importance to the widows. Jesus was the one who made the crippled to walk in his time. Jesus was the one who raised the dead in his time. But when it came to a time, he was insulted, he was humiliated, he was maltreated, but he never revenged. And what the scriptures say, we as the children of God, we are examples. We as God outsprings, we are examples. And we have to live according to these steps. Now I know in family disputes, I know in associations that we find ourselves, I know in churches today, churches today that we find ourselves, and I know in relationships, in intimate relationships, I mean relationship between uh, a man and a woman, intimate relationships, marriages, engagements, regular relationships, and in our communities, we come in contact every day, every day of our life. We come in contact with a non-repentant person, a non-repentant spirit. We come in contact with many people who carry that spirit, non-repentant. They don't repent. They don't ask for forgiveness. Every day we come in contact with these people, okay? A person who knows they have wronged you, but refuse blatantly to say, I'm sorry. Are you getting me? A person in their hearts, they know they have offended you, but they, they trample upon your rights. Trample upon your rights without remorse. Many times. Okay? Who is a non-repentant person? Who is a, who is a, 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 a person who doesn't say sorry. A person who doesn't say sorry is someone who looks at you. They are aware that they have wronged you. They are aware that they did so many things to you, but refuses to apologize. Now, as a child of God, as a Christian, you, you, you build animosity against this person or against this society, against this um, family person, against this association, against this relationship, and the mercy built up in your heart against the community. Because why? You are a human being. You can even be the most biggest woman of God, the most biggest man of God, but you are a human being. God created us and we have feelings. So sometimes we let the feelings, uh, you know, take a big portion of our life when we are hurt. But today I'm here to tell you how you can be able to forgive without somebody happening to apologize to you. And why is it essential to do that? What the scriptures say? And what is reality to you? Okay. Today in the time that we find ourselves, today, in the hours that we find ourselves, in this time and era, in this year, in this new era, new generation that we find ourselves, people offend people and they refuse to apologize. In our churches, in our associations, in our community, in our family, they do that and they refuses to apologize. And what are some factors that, that contribute to this person that has or non-repentant spirits to actually gloat themselves. A person, 
you know, that have a non-repentant spirit to not apologize. And what are factors that make them to grow themselves? You know, and permit me to say, I know when someone offends you, I know how hurtful it is because I have been there. I have, I, have, I have gone through and I know how it feels when somebody does something to you that's so hurtful in relationship, in community, in society, in associations, in family, and they blatantly refuse to apologize. It's so hurtful. It's so painful. Because why? You know, you are a human being. So the scriptures is saying to you another thing, what you can do to be able to, you know, put on a full armor, a strong armor to be able to say, you know what, it's okay. But today, people with non-repentant spirit, they are motivated by tradition. They are motivated by age. They are motivated by culture. They are motivated, motivated sorry. They are motivated by financial influences and they are motivated as well by emotional feelings and always um, physical necessities. So I just want to take my time and break this up one after the other. Why would somebody be so, you know, non-repentant? What are some factors that they can use to feel that it's okay to not apologize to you? You know, I want, I want to Open your mindset to it today, because sometimes I know as a Christian, as, as a believer, it's hard to forgive those who have offended us. But um, let's see the factors that contribute to them. Tradition. A man is allowed to marry another wife without, without the opinion of his wife. Because scripture says one and one, man and woman. It didn't say, you know, one man and two women. No, it didn't say Adam and Eve, Eve. It didn't say Eve and Adam, Adam. Scriptures indicated in the beginning, God said Adam and Eve. So there are some traditions that allow a man to marry two women. And the first wife is there because maybe she couldn't have a child, maybe because she was not able to give birth. This man, because of his own personal interests, goes out and brings in another wife. Now, you being the woman in the house, it hurts. You being the woman in that situation is so painful to you. Because you are wondering, where did I go wrong? Why would he do this to me? After we struggle, we built everything that we have together. Yes, I probably don't have a kid now, but I've been but the backbone of this person's success. Why did they do this to me? Why did he trust God that one day God will bless us with the fruit of the womb? I am not the giver of children. So then you bear grudge in your heart. You bear pain in your heart because what? You don't want to leave the marriage because you are putting so much effort. You don't want to walk away because you are putting so much effort. So you are there, but in your heart, you are thinking about retaliation. In your heart, you are thinking about what you can do to this individual to hurt more than what he has done to you. Am I right? I know the feeling of hurt. Hallelujah. We are talking today about forgiving without apologies. But we are looking at factors that can make the heart to be hard, hardened, like a uh, very stone, things that can make our heart to be like stone, things that can make our heart to, to be so strong that we are not able to let go. Another one is age. You know, many people use age and they offend people in many countries. In your family, you probably have an older brother or an older sister who disrespects you all the time, do you wrong all the time. And because he or she is older than you, she feels that she does not have to apologize. 
Now, scripture did not say that she or he shouldn't apologize, but there are some families that prioritize age, the respect of age, instead of individual respect. Understand that even if I'm a little child, I still need to be respected. And even if um, I am poor and you are rich and you're my older brother, you're my older sister, I still have to be respected because why I am a creation of God. But there are some people who don't understand that. So because of age, respect, because of age disadvantages, there are people who trample upon the rights of their little brothers, their little sisters, or just people that they are older than in their society, in their community, in their churches, in their traditions, and they don't apologize. Now, as a human being, when your 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 when your rights is trampled upon, it feels so it feels so bad. You feel helpless, and because you feel helpless you look for ways to retaliate. You look for ways to, you know, you look for ways to get back at the person. But in the process where you're trying to look for ways to get back at the person, you have created a stone heart in you. A stone heart in you. A stone heart in you. Like um, a older brother, who knows very well the father left for you guys inheritance. He can blatantly take your inheritance because he already has his land, but he still, because of greed, takes your, your, your portion of land as well from you. And now families will support that because he's the first son of the family or because she's the first daughter of the family and you are left with hurt and you build up that stone heart what you can do to retaliate against this person. Hallelujah. Cultures also play a factor to why people celebrate their non-repentant spirits, culture. Some cultures, men beat up women and don't apologize. Inflict pain on another person and you don't apologize. Take this figure or somebody physical appearance and 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 don't apologize. And find it sometimes some people find it funny, but it's not funny. There are some women that beat up their husbands, and they don't apologize. Disfigure them, and they don't apologize. And that person, because they love you, they are in a relationship for years and years, and they are building up an immersity against you and how they can retaliate against you, how they can get back at you, how they can do that. Okay. Oh, uh, the husband will build up years, you know, of an immersity against you. And the woman can build up some years of an animosity against you. Quarters. Majority, most of the time, is the women that fall victim. They are being battered, abused most of the time. You understand? So, cultural play factor. Hallelujah. And I spoke about financial influence. Financial influence. You want to ask me from what aspect am, am I talking about? Financial influence has the capacity to make a person with a non-repentant spirit gloat the more and don't even want to apologize to you. And what from what point am I speaking from today? Hallelujah. Around the globes, majority of partners, they don't work. So when another partner has job, when another partner is working and is the breadwinner of the home, the provider for the home, they, they, they believe that they are above the law. They believe that they don't even need to practice what they call love. They don't even need to respect the person. They don't even need to respect the person. It's like nothing to them. So when they trample upon the person, right? go out and spend late, late hours and come home late and the person says something, they don't apologize. They go out and they keep extra marital relationship or extra relationships 
when the person says something, they don't apologize. What are the reasons they won't apologize? Because they know financially they are stable and the person is not stable. Hallelujah. Financially, they are stable and you are not stable. So they do whatever they want to do and then, and then get away with it because at the end of the day, you will still go back to them and say, oh, honey, can I have money to buy food for the children? Oh, honey, can I have money to um, buy food for the house? Oh, honey, can I please have money to, you know, get some road arms for my, my arms, spray, lotion, you know? Uh, honey, um, can I have money to pay the rent? They know that financially you are enslaved to them because you don't have job. So they feel that if they have offended you, they don't need to apologize. And I've seen that in so many countries, European countries, America, Africa, Middle East, India, it's everywhere. People with non-repentant spirits because of financial influences in the, in the home. Hallelujah. And the other one is emotional feelings. There are partners who refuse to apologize when they're wrong because they know you feel very strongly about them. They know that no matter what they do, you're not about to go anywhere. Number one, they have done the analysis. Analysis like they have good sex. Analysis like they have wonderful physical appearance. Analysis that, um, that maybe you know, you have no family members, but you take them to be your family now. You are often and you love them. So they look at your emotions for them. They look at your sentiments for them and they build up on it and they do wickedness and they do things that are not right, unjustifiable things. And then they know you will stay because why? Your heart is beating for them. Your heart loves them. It's a situation where you will see a man beat a woman blue black. She will get up and go to the kitchen and cook because she loves them. It's a situation where you will see a man or a woman have multiple sexual partners and after um, come and ask for forgiveness and that will be, no, the women ask for forgiveness, I'm sorry. And then after they come and then they know you know, you think they're so cute. You think that they are, they, they are the only person that has good intercourse. So um, you wouldn't go away. Emotional abusers, people that prey on the emotions of partners and they don't apologize because they're walking with that non-repentant spirit. And lastly, but not the least, is physical necessities. Like your needs, your physical needs. You need a house, you need a you need a, a, a car, you need clothes, car is not so much, but you need a house, you need a place to lay your head, you need food to eat, you, you, you need um good health, you need money to maybe take care of yourself. So you are in this relationship with this person, or you're in this family with this person. Who knows that physically they are providing for you, whether it's in the society, it's in the community, but they just refuse. They just refuse um, to apologize to you when they wrong you. In the physical necessity, we can also look at students who are on campus around the globe, because now it's happening to every European countries and American countries, where a student is very good in studies and um, they are very good in studies, and for some reason, there is a teacher that liked them, and that teacher just decide because of their own ego and their own weakness to make this person to continue to fail. When they, when they do good in class, they cut them off. They don't give them good grace. Trying to, the person break their head to study, they don't give them good grace. So you go to this person, and you say, why am I feeling? I want to know what I'm doing wrong. And they say to you, you're not really doing anything wrong. I just like you and I want you to go out with me. When you go out with me, I will give you exactly what you need. I will give you all your desires. And sometimes there are some people 
you guys are put in a position you feel like you know you suffer so much to come to college and now that you're in college somebody is trying to trample upon um your effort so you just give in and you let the person have their way so that you can get your grace but then you build you build up an immersity in your heart because it's the last year of your university and you don't want to fail and you don't want to carry over and you feel like it's a sacrifice that you made but you are hurt when you're doing it and you build up an immersity in your heart and you think about how you're going to retaliate against this person so these are the factors people who don't have repentant spirits they they i, I want to say they don't worth your time yeah they don't worth your time because they will continue coming back offending you continue coming back taking advantage of you and they will not apologize to you in their mind they think is the right thing that they are doing in their mind is that you need me i don't need you in their mind when we go through these things finding a place in our hearts to forgive is so hard when we go through these things hallelujah once we go through these things finding a place in our heart to forgive is so difficult but i want to have I want to have something clear to you today. I want to make something clear to you, okay? When we don't, when we don't forgive people who offended us and refuse to apologize, it's like as if we are adding another baggage onto our life. Yeah, we are adding another baggage onto our life what are you adding the hurt the shame the humiliation the setback you are adding double portion of that onto you and it's not good for you it's not good when when we don't forgive people who offend us we carry loads already we are there we are hurting and we just refuse to let go, you know? And then we, 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 we turn into this bitter person. We turn into this person that is hurting all the time. We turn into this person that, 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 that is vengeful all the time, that wants to revenge all the time. But that's not what God said. God didn't want that for you to be this kind of a person that is always angry. I know that that person upsets you and you were so upset i know that person took advantage of you and you were so mad and you didn't know how to do you didn't know what to do at the time i know that person did something and you it left your spirit man saying wow really god i'm going to get back at this person so you want to revenge all the time because why you you came up grieving you grew up grieving Many are the things that people do to us. Fathers rape children. Mothers rape children. Many are the things that people do to us. And you grow up grieving. But what did God say? God said in his words, Jesus said, he did not. He said, I did not retaliate when I was insulted. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who judges what fairly. Believer at the sound of my voice. Because you know what? That person who offended you is somewhere enjoying their life. They don't even care because they are they are, they are don't care person. So they, they offended you, they hurt you, they took advantage of you, and they, they, they got to you. So they are somewhere enjoying their life, having fun. But you are hurt, thinking about the thing they did to you many years ago. And why would they do it to you? You are such a good person. You are such a nice person. And, and you, 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 instead of moving on with your life, you are there hurting and being sad. And every positive good things, positive good things is passing by you. Because why? You are, a lot, you are taking the person's weakness 
into your mind and your heart, you combine it together and you are becoming a different person. Honey, child of God, I came to tell you today to let go and let God forgive without them having to apologize to you. Because once you forgive, it's like a therapy inside you. Something, some kind of a hot air leaves. Some kind of a hot air leaves your body. It's like you take off a load. So even if that person is passing around telling people, oh, she doesn't talk to me. Oh, he doesn't talk to me. Oh, he, uh, this person, this, that, this person. You have let go. You are forgiving them. You didn't have to go tell them that you're forgiving them, but you let go and you have peace. You become at peace in your spirit. And when they come to their senses, they know that they have wronged you. If they want to apologize, fine. But if they don't want to apologize, that's okay. Because what? You are a child of God created in his image and you must live like his examples. People will do things to you all the time and they will act as if nothing happened. People will do things to you all the time and they will blame you for it. They will turn it around. And I know when people turn things around and make you look like you are at fault, it hurts. I have been there and I know the feeling that I'm talking about. I know how it feels when somebody do that to you. I know how it feels when somebody actually refuses to apologize to you after hurting you. Forgiving without somebody having to apologize to you. It's what Jesus did when he said, Father. He said, Father. When we look at Luke 23, verse 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Hallelujah. Jesus was somebody who sacrificed a lot for these people. Jesus was somebody who, who, who provided for them in one way or the other. May the blind to see, may the crippled to walk, may the barren to be fruitful, turn, gave people food, fed the hungry. But yet, they decided to, to insult him, they decided to, to treat him wickedness for goodness. We come across people like that every day in our society, in our community, in our associations. We do. And they, they, they do it to us. And we have open heart towards them. And, and, and they do it to us. But if they do it to you, my dear mother, my dear brother, my dear sister, my son at the sound of my voice, my father at the sound of my voice, forgave without them happening to apologize. You are a bigger person because why? You are a Christian. You don't have to go to them to say, I forgave you. But it forgave them for you, yourself, so that you may be free. Because once you forgive them, you will stop thinking about what they did to you. You will let God to enter your heart and fill that space that they hurt for so many years. You know, fill that space, whatever the hurt is. You will, you will allow God to enter your heart and he will fill that space that the person have hurt for so many years. Do you understand me? And when God filled that space, it's so much joy. It's so much gladness. And you will see that you will begin to do good things. You will see that you will begin to advance in your life. You will see that. Hallelujah. When Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brothers and sisters who sin against me? Jesus answered and say what? In the book of Matthew 18, verse 21 to 22, Jesus said, I tell you, not seven times will you forgive them. Not seven times, but 77 times. So this is the message. 77 times. Jesus said we should forgive 77 times. Now, like I said, uh, like I said, I'm not being, I am not being, um, I am not being insensitive to your feelings when I say you should forgive. But I'm, I'm concerned about you. That is why I say you should forgive without them forgiving, without them asking for forgiveness. Because 
light has nothing to do with darkness. A person who has a non-repentant spirit is in darkness still. You are a child of God. You are in light. Light has nothing to do with darkness. The two don't work together. So you are light. Continue to glow. Continue to shine. If he offended you, forgive him in your heart for your sake so that you will have good health, so that you will think well, so that good things will locate you, so that maybe if it was a relationship and this person offended you and they walked away when you did nothing to them, forgive them. I know it's hurting, but forgive them. Let God take that space and open windows for you and let other people come in. Let them come in willingly. If it's that brother, that older brother, that older sister, that offended you and never took care of you as a child and was helping other people but never thought about you, forgave them and let God take that particular space and replace it with joy. And he will, you will see the goodness of God. If it's that mother that abandoned you, if it's that father that abandoned you and you harbor so much hate in their heart, why you have so many questions, why they abandon you? Why my mother will abandon me? Why would she give me to charity? Why would my father give me to charity? And you have all these questions in your head. And you say, you know what? I hate this woman for making me to go through this. I hate this man for making me to go through this. And for years, you have been hurting. Today, I just came to let you know, let go and then you let God forgive without somebody happening to apologize to you using the scriptures, using the scriptures. Okay, we must forgive 70 times 70. Do it for you. It is healthy. Your spiritual health matters. Your physical health matters to your father in heaven. He so loved you that he sent his only begotten son to die for you. So you don't have to wallow in pain. You don't have to wallow in shame. Wipe up that hurt, push it aside and move on with life again. Try again. I know you feel that your heart has been broken. You can't trust friends anymore. You don't even want to have what they call friends anymore. I've been there. You know, you feel like your heart is broken. You, 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 you don't even want to affiliate yourself with society, with associations and, and churches and all these things. You can try again. I know you are hurt. And you're saying, I don't even want to try and get in marriage or get in relationship again. I had the worst marriage in my life. I've had worse relationship. I don't even want to have relationship. I know. You have sacrificed so much in relationship and they disappointed you and you are hurt and you're living in hurt. I want you to let go and let God. Let go and let God take off that load that you are carrying. Let that person low go so that God can, can finally, so that God can finally fix you up. So that God can move majestically in your life. Let go and let God. Are you getting me? Let go and let Jesus. It's very essential for you. That person, let them walk in their spirit of non-repentance. God is the one who judged fairly and he sees the wrong that people have done to you. He sees the wrong that people have done. Oh my God, he's going to judge fairly. He will treat those wickedness the way they are supposed to be treated. He will. He will fight for you. He will. Trust me. He will. So the woman of God told me this. Now it's hard for me to let go, but um, I have to try. You can let go. I know it's hurt. It hurts so much to know that it is your family member who took advantage of you and raped you. It hurts so much to know that the time and effort you put in that marriage it had to break up like that. It hurts so much to know that your child will be the one who calls authorities on you. It hurts so much to know that, that your best friend for years will be the one who throws you under the bus. It hurts so much. And I, I feel your pain because I've been there as well through it all. 
but I let go and I let God. And because I let go and I let God, I am happy today. I'm happy. And I want you to be happy too at the climax of our message. If you see a person who does wrong consistently, lies about it and refuse to apologize, that means you are a bigger person. That means you are the one who has the spiritual mantle and you need to get on your knees. If you, con if you want to continue to keep this person around you, then you must intercede. But if, you, if they're not going to be around you, if they have gone, forget about the hurt. Forget about the pain, the shame, the humiliation, the maltreatment. Forget about it. And let God. God said in his word, I did not retaliate when they insulted me. No. You say what? He did not retaliate according to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse what? 23. Let me just go up a little bit. For God, we're looking at 21. For God called you to be good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered. Hallelujah. For you, it said, even if it means suffering as Christ suffered for you. Hallelujah. He is your example and you must follow his steps. He never sinned nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted. No. Nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judged fairly. And believer, that is your message for you today. Leave your case in the hands of the Lord. Let go and let God, let God take charge. May God bless you. And I love you with the love of God. More grace to do exploits in Jesus' name. I celebrate you today wherever you are. And I want to let you know that that hurt, that pain, that shame does not identify you. You are a very good person. And allow God to, to allow the will of God to be done in your life. So that is it. I love you. I love you. And may God bless you. We will see you next Sunday on the All Nations Prayer Movement online ministry. God bless you.